Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Obama just got brutal news about his cushy $200,000 presidential pension. Since leaving office January this year, former Democratic President Barack Obama has been keeping busy on what appears to be a permanent vacation. He has been parasailing with billionaire Virgin founder Richard Branson, taking in the sights in a visa, Spain with his shopping addict wife Michelle and, of course, going golfing. Amid all this leisure, ex-President Obama has also been spending time at his new house in Washington, D.C., working with radical progressive groups training young people to be part of the so-called resistance against President Trump. All this time, nauseatingly, Barack Obama has been collecting pension paychecks course to see of American taxpayers. Thankfully, that may change very soon. According to the Daily Caller, a new bill has been advancing through the Senate that would get American taxpayers off the hook for giving President Obama a pension that he clearly does not need. The bill was introduced by Republican Senator Joni Ernst of Iowa and, if passed, would cap pensions for former presidents at $200,000, with increases pegged directly to increases of cost of living. Better yet, if the former president earns more than $400,000 a year, for every dollar they earn over that amount, a dollar will be taken away from that $200,000 pension. In Obama's case, he is already well over the $400,000 mark due to book sales and speaking fees. Therefore, if Senator Ernst's bill is signed into law, there is a very good chance Barack Obama will get no money from American taxpayers for his pension, at all. Are you glad in the future you may not have to pay for Obama's retirement? Democrats just introduced new bill into Congress to take down Donald Trump. This is bad. A new bill was introduced in the House of Representatives that is designed to target President Donald Trump. They are trying to determine if he is stable enough to stay in office. Rep. Zoe Lofgren, Democrat California, introduced the bill on Friday and will call for Vice President Mike Pence and all the members of the cabinet will be removed Trump from office. This an obvious coup of the government. They are trying to use the 25th Amendment that allows the vice president and the majority of cabinet members to remove the president from office. Does the president suffer from early stage dementia? Loaf Gern asked. Has emotional disorder so impaired the president that he is unable to discharge his duties? She continued. Is the president mentally and emotionally stable? The liberal Logren represents California's 19th district and is not a professional psychiatrist or psychologist, according to Mercury News. These people are nuts. They should keep on pushing this 25th Amendment crap. It even trended this summer under the hashtag 25th Amendment hashtag on Twitter. If it was a physical ailment, you would be getting the advice of doctors, Rothgren told Mercury News. The same thing should be true to take a look at his stability here. Share this to make it go viral. These liberals should push to invoke the 25th Amendment. It would be the worst mistake of their lives. The amendment is really designed to deal with brain-dead presidents, like people in comas. Here is the part these idiots are missing. Let's take a look at Section 3 of the 25th Amendment. Whenever the president transmits to the president pro tempore of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives his written declaration that he is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office, and until he transmits to them a written declaration to the contrary, such powers and duties shall be discharged by the vice president as acting president. See that. It means that Trump could come back from this at any time if he says that he is mentally stable. The Democrats are the really unstable party right now. Have you no shame Geraldo Rivera crushes Federica Wilson for politicizing Gold Star phone call? 
Florida Rep. Frederica Wilson went after President Trump for how he allegedly gave condolences to a grieving Gold Star mother. John Kelly defended the president and the fight continued. John Kelly called Wilson an empty barrel. In reference to the idea that someone with an empty head makes the most noise. Wilson, out of nowhere said the term empty barrel is racist. That's a racist term, too. I'm thinking about that one. We looked it up in the dictionary because I had never heard of an empty barrel. And I don't like to be dragged into something like that. The only thing I want to be dragged into right now is getting back our girls who are the victims of Boko Haram in Nigeria, said Wilson. Geraldo Rivera defended John Kelly saying that his speech was non-political and that Wilson is acting in a very shameful way. That was the least political speech I have heard in years from Washington. That was the most heartfelt speech. To take the president's condolence call to the widow and make that like everything else, it's just like everything else, and at some point you've got to think where's the dignity? Have you no shame? said Geraldo. I just wish that she would drop it. Let's drop this now. This is the last thing this widow needs, said Geraldo. Do you think he's right? Tucker Carlson exposes why attorney Lisa Bloom is the next Hal Sharpton, it's horrifying. Tucker Carlson called out feminist attorney Lisa Bloom as being the next Hal Sharpton in an epicrant. Celebrity lawyer Lisa Bloom sells herself as a fiery champion of the oppressed. Bloom once sued the Catholic Church over its sex abuse scandal, started Carlson. She sued the Boy Scouts because of the time they didn't admit girls. She represented one of Bill Cosby's accusers and three women who said Bill O'Reilly sexually harassed them. She is on television all the time, the Al Sharpton of the feminist movement. And in the case of Harvey Weinstein, Lisa Bloom took the side of the predator over the prey, likely because the price was right, said Carlson. In the original New York Times piece exposing Weinstein's behavior, Bloom appears as Weinstein's attorney, advisor, confidant, explainer and chief. She tried to explain away his behavior as the fumblings of the confused relic from an earlier age, he continued. In her words, an old dinosaur learning new ways. According to Lisa Bloom, Weinstein didn't realize that groping terrified women might be perceived as, quote, intimidating, he continued. As in the case of Harvey Weinstein, Lisa Bloom was paid to provide moral cover for a man accused of predatory misdeeds against women. His career in jeopardy, he hired Lisa Bloom to explain away his problems. And because she is precisely that kind of feminist for hire, Lisa Bloom took the job, explained Carlson. Do you think she is a huge hypocrite? Roseanne just smacked down LeBron Reiner for all that Russian BS, it's awesome. It is a very surprising development, but former liberal and then libertarian actress and comedian Roseanne Barr has turned into one of the strongest critics recently of Hollywood liberals. Barr, whose iconic sitcom Roseanne depicted the lives of struggling regular Americans in the Rust Belt, has also become an active supporter of Republican President Donald Trump. Roseanne, however, knows she is up against a big challenge when fighting back against the knee-jerk liberals who run the entertainment industry in Los Angeles. One of her biggest foes has been actor and The Princess Bride director Rob Reiner. Reiner, who lives in hyper-wealthy Malibu, is apparently still living out the loser lefty hippie character meathead he played in the 70s sitcom All in the Family. Reiner recently became part of a group called the Committee to Investigate Russia which has been attempting to keep the collusion conspiracy theory about Trump and Russia alive. Via her Twitter account, Roseanne detailed an interaction she recently had with Reiner where she called him out for his continued smears about the president. Recounted Barr, I drank too much in NYC and saw Rob Reiner and could not help myself I went over to him and got into a fight with him over all that Russian BS. She continued, I said you're buying fake news he said. I'm not going to listen to this. I'm out of here. I said you should politely discuss opinions. Roseanne concluded, polite conversation on the way out of the restaurant was not possible, 
Sadly. Are you glad Roseanne stuck it to liver Lydia Reiner like this? Radio host Delilah just got deeply tragic news, it's so sad, will you pray for her? Iconic nationally syndicated radio host Delilah Renee has been brightening the lives of Americans with her comforting voice and words for years. Tragically, it appears that Delilah right now is the one who is in great need of comfort. Through her Facebook account, Delilah announced this month that her son Zachariah had committed suicide. In the background of her Facebook page, Delilah posted the National Suicide Prevention Hotline number, 1-800-273-8255. Wrote Renee about her late son, he was being treated, counseled, and embraced fiercely by family and friends while battling depression for some time now. My heart is broken beyond repair and I cannot fathom how to go on. But I have to believe he is at peace with the Lord and that God will get us through. The beloved radio host continued, I will be absent from the radio and on social media for a time as I grieve and try to process this loss with my family. In the meantime we'll be playing some of my favorite shows from the recent past. I'll look forward to my return, as you all lift me up so very much." Delilah concluded her sad post by saying, Please pray for my beloved Zaki, and I will pray for all suffering from this debilitating disease called depression. Will you pray for Delilah Renee and her family during this very difficult time?